third and final mode is slice mode. Slice mode is similar to the one-shot mode, but now rather than having just one selection or one sample to play back, it takes that single sample and slices it up into multiple samples that we can then trigger to play back with specific MIDI notes. So unlike the previous two samples where we had the same sample or the same selection of a sample available across the entire range of our MIDI keyboard, and then depending upon which note I've triggered that sample to play back, that would dictate or control the rate at which that sample would play back. So if I trigger it with a C3, it'll play back its original rate. If I trigger it with a C4, twice as fast, C2, half as fast. Um, but now in this slicing mode, the MIDI note that I trigger it with will dictate or control which slice of the sample will play back. And it's always going to start with the first slice as being C1. So if I play a C1, I trigger that first slice. If I play a C sharp one, next slice, and so on chromatically up my keyboard depending upon how many slices I have. Now within that we've got the gain control like we had before which adjusts the overall volume of the sample. Then we have the trigger and the gate modes which controls how and when the sample plays back in relationship to the MIDI event or the MIDI trigger event. So in trigger mode, if I trigger a slice, it will play from the beginning to the end regardless of how long my note is held. If I switch into gate mode, it cares how long the note is held. So I can get very staccato notes out to the full slice of the sample. Now sensitivity controls how many of these slices are created within my sample. As I reduce this down, you'll see it gradually starts eliminating slices down to the point where now I've only got one slice. So if I'm in trigger mode and I trigger a C1, it'll play the entire sample all the way through. Now if I do a C sharp one, there's nothing to trigger because there is only one slice. So that whole sample is assigned to only C1. As I increase the sensitivity, I'll get those slices back. So now if I play C sharp one, you'll see it starts at that second slice, so on and so forth. If I get all the way back up to 100%, and let's say I want to add more slices, like these two little notes in here, I can actually just go in and create those by double clicking. We'll create a slice, and then I can drag those around. So I can even go in and edit the locations of these slices. So as we can see here, this one's a little bit off, so I can take and drag that over to be exactly at that moment. And then so all I have to do is either create a new one, double click, or I can delete them by the same thing, double clicking. So let's get that one back. And let's delete that extra one that I made. Then this last section here, playback, we have three modes of playback that we can have. Mono means that I can only play one slice at a time. So if I try and trigger two at a time, it will only allow one sample to play back at a time. If I switch into poly mode, I can play back as many as I want to, dependent upon the number of voices that I have selected. So the voices, if you remember from classic modes, is how many simultaneous samples can I have playing back within this simpler. We also see that same retrigger that we saw before in classic mode. So for refreshers on, the on that, jump back to that classics video. But now I can play multiple slices within my sample simultaneously. The last playback mode is through mode. What this means is now you can think of each of these slices as not just being slices, but also start points within my sample. So if I play a C sharp or a C1, it starts at slice one, plays all the way to the end of my sample. If I play um, a G1, it starts at that slice and plays all the way to the end. So it's just starting at whatever that slice is and playing through to the end, hence the name through. So that's slice mode. Um, now we'll move on to talking about warping.